Hi, this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali from Excel Basement. In this video tutorial, we will learn that how we can work on very large data sets within Microsoft Excel with the help of BI tools that is available. The first one is Microsoft Power Query and the second one is Microsoft Power Pivot. So as you know, uh, a lot of Excel students and professionals uh, assume that uh, in one Excel worksheet, there are only 1 million of rows and uh, if we have the large data sets, for example, 2 million, 4 million or 10 million of rows, then how we can get into one sheet? So technically, this is right because uh, as we can see that there is only 1 million rows as per one worksheet in Excel workbook. But if you have, uh, for example, large data sets, you can use Power BI to get the data and then move that data to the Power Pivot rather than publishing that or uh, pasting that data onto the normal spreadsheet okay so I will be sharing you that solution uh, and after this video you will be able to uh, I mean change your perception that Excel is also able to hand large data sets and we will see what are those up to certain limitations uh, to these BI tools as well remember that uh, uh, the techniques which I will be following uh, using the Microsoft Excel Power Query and Power Pivot Technically, that will remain same if you are user of Microsoft Power BI. There, you can also use Power Query uh, and uh, append the data from multiple Excel workbooks or any other data source. So let's get started. Uh, as we know that the maximum number of rows in one Excel worksheet is approximately 1 million, right? But let's say this is not true. If you have a large data sets and we want to ERP application, uh, you can use API to connect with that as well. And once you get those large multiple files data and append in the Power Query, then you will use the Power Pivot. Okay. Power Query and Power Pivot is available almost in most of the versions of Microsoft Excel. Uh, for older versions of Excel, like to in particular scenario, so I have added some complex points to this uh, example so that everything should be covered in one video uh, trying to do that. So first scenario I have added is that we will be getting uh, data from four Excel workbooks saved in a specific folder. Each Excel workbook contains a worksheet uh, which consists of a data of around uh, 1 million rows in it. Okay. So technically there will be four Excel workbooks so around 4 million of data would be there and we will be appending that data in Power Query. Another point is that each Excel worksheet name is different and the data is stored as in a, in a table format in each of the workbook and the, their names are also different. So technically uh, every Excel file contains a worksheet, names are different and the data table names are also different too. Then technically, as I told you, we will be getting around 4 million of rows. It could be larger than that as well in your scenario, but technically this will cover uh, the concept. Okay, so each workbook contains more than 1 million of rows. So we have four workbooks, four sheets, and technically there are four plus million rows data we, which we will be having together. The number of columns in each Excel workbooks are not same. I mean, there are four Excel workbooks and the number of columns are not same. Some data have three columns, some data is five columns. So, and the sequence is also not same. So that, that could be possible as well. And there are few additional columns, like if some data in monthly file has three columns, so I have put two more columns in other files so that it could become more complex in a situation. And we will see how Power Query is able to handle those kind of situations, okay? So I hope this point is clear to you and that practically happens in real time that uh, each of your data sets does not consist of uh, same number of columns. Uh, it does not matter with the relevancy of rows or records, but all right. Some of the key points we need to consider here with the power pivot for Excel, there is theoretically no limit on the number of rows of data. Uh, the actual limitation depends on desktop systems in order to make this process smooth. So as I told you, Power Pivot is available in almost all of the versions, right? Now let's see the practical part. You can visit my website, uh, rahimzilfikareli.com if you want any kind of consultancy with respect to your Excel spreadsheets or Power BI dashboards, I'm available. 
and you can subscribe to my channel that is excel basement on youtube uh, there are a lot of videos to follow in the course all right so as you can see here uh, i have made a folder in my local hard drive that is e drive uh, this is the folder name and we have four excel files four excel workbooks right and you can see the size of each of the excel workbook each workbook contains one sheet uh, has having more than 1 million of rows so two files are of 17 mb uh, one is 12 mb and another one is 20 mb why because it contains more columns as compared to the other ones okay all right so let's get start uh, how to get this 4 millions of data all together right with the help of power query and then power pivot in microsoft excel uh, let me show you uh, the data as well so you can see here uh, i have opened the workbook for the month of january it, it consists of four columns sales date sales usd year month and if i go downwards so you can see the records are of 1 million rows right so each of the workbook uh, and the worksheet contains 1 million of records let's go to the next month uh, this month of february workbook contains just three columns now we have don't have that uh, four columns likewise in the month of january right so we have uneven number of columns as well as if you see at the month of april uh, the sequence of the columns is also changed as compared to the january file and february file you can see here sales usd is the second column right and an additional column is available in the file of for the month of april where you will not find the column of day in uh, likewise in any other file see so this particularly makes it more complex that the sequence of columns in each of the file is not similar and uh, the number of columns are also not similar right but make sure that if you are a user of power query power query is a case sensitive uh, and uh, for example if you have written a title or a header called month in capital letters in in any other file you have written it in a small letter so uh, that will create a trouble for you so uh, the spelling should be correct for each of the header and the case sensitive as well uh, all right so let's get start uh, okay so let's get start i have open a new workbook so let's go to data and this is get and trans transform data group which is known as power query so i will click on get data from file and i will click on from folder i have defined the folder path and i will now click on open so it will open up a window and th this is the meta data okay so what what we need to do here is because all the sheet names all the table names are different if It, at the initial stage if i click on combine and load it will give me an error because it will not uh, be successful to execute and append the data uh, correctly so we will click on transform data to get into power query first okay so let's click now that's open uh, the data meta data into the power query editor now we will do some steps here we need the content and name column whereas the other columns are not necessary here so we need to remove them so i will select content and name column right click and i will click on remove other columns okay now we will add one custom column so for doing that you will go to add column tab and click on custom column Okay so let's define a name for the custom column data and let's write an m language code remember it's case sensitive so excel dot workbook bracket open let's double click on content and close the bracket okay click okay now it creates a custom column for us name as data and we know that each of the excel workbook contains a table let's open this drop down menu uncheck this field which is use original name as prefix make sure all columns are check mark click okay all right so once is expanded now we will expand the drop down of kind column and we will just select the table okay now we are ready to fetch the data so as you can see here we have a column that is known as data dot one let's open the drop down menu and you can see here all the column headers are available which were there in the excel workbook so let's click okay 
and here it is right so unnecessary columns we can delete them right click remove okay if you want table names or if you want the file names you can keep the these columns uh, I will keep any one column let's say remove the file names the table names are there so this is as names and what we are not required we don't want item column kind and hidden column so just select them right click remove columns and uh, all your data is here from four different excel workbooks of around four million right now once you have that data what you will do you will click on close and load but you will not click on this menu right this option close and load because this will close on a this will close this interface and load the data on the interface of spreadsheet and you know that the spreadsheet is a limitation of 1 million rows so technically after running the process for a few minutes that will give you an error so what you need to do is you need to close and load to and then you need to switch this very large data set to the power pivot window okay so let's click on close and load to All right, so now it shows you a small window of import data and we will say only create connection. The first choice will be only create connection and we will check mark on add this data to the data model. So this data is technically going to the data model which will be uh, can access through power pivot add in. Okay, so we are not technically uh, publishing the data on the, the spreadsheet interface. Okay, so make sure you selected these options whenever you have big data so let's click ok this power query is giving data to in, inside the data model which is to the power pivot so we have to wait until the data gets loaded so it will take three to five minutes uh, depends on the ram available to your laptop or system right and once it being completed we will see the view of all four million raws together into the power pivot Alright, so it shows us that 4.1 million of rows has been loaded, right? Now, the question will come that where is the data? I mean, I can't see the data right here. So as I told you that it's being shifted to the data model and that's available inside the Power Pivot add-in. So here it is. So make sure that you have Power Pivot enabled and we will go to manage. Okay, so click on as it's written here data model, click on manage. that comes from uh, different Excel workbooks and you can see here uh, Power Query was smart enough to append the data correctly below each of the header so as you can see that day month year sales sales date and the names of the files and you can see here uh, record one of 4194 300 which means that you can see this big data of more than 1 million of rows technically you can here look at this uh, this is the 4 million of records or a data uh, in one sheet of the power pivot right so if you have 10 million 11 million of records you can append that through power query first and shift that to the data model and one more thing which is very important that uh, if you want to do analytics on this particular data set uh, on this big data what you can do is you can create a pivot table uh, and then you can uh, add some slicers visualizations and you can do analytics but remember that power pivot when you append the big data into the power pivot power pivot understands the DAX data analysis expression so uh, the modern Excel user needs to learn data analysis expressions rather he's working on power BI or uh, Microsoft Excel so DAX language can gives you flexibility to fetch some numbers out of the data so this means that primarily whenever the modern Excel user who is using Power Query and Power Pivot for big data sets uh, and using the BI tools in Microsoft Excel would technically uh, needs to update themselves in order to learn Power Query and Power Pivot and DAX language as well right so I hope uh, this have resolved your issue let me show it to you uh, let's get the data on the main screen so I will click on pivot table and it will say where we need to create a pivot so let's create here click OK and let me show you the number of records here so month and uh, let's say values 
and you can see that each of the uh, sheet consists of around 1 million of records and we have successfully 4 plus 1 million of records in one spreadsheet that was the power pivot right all right so now later on if you decide that if you go want to go back to the power query for some transformations right so what you can do is you can go to the data tab again and click on queries and connections and just right click here and click on add it it will open up a power query editor now one of the best part you have observed that i sh show you that uh, in each of the excel workbook there are some less columns and there are some more columns and the sequence was different but technically power query has this intelligence that they have matched the headers and they have compiled it successfully below each header that, that data now think of it if you are doing appending manually from different excel workbooks that will give you a painful uh, and time consuming things uh, to rearrange and sort the data and to gather the data right but power query handles it smartly and one more thing is that if for example next month if the user add a new file which is extracted from any kind of software or ERP software and the user just paste the raw file here in this particular folder what happens I mean let's say if I make a copy here copy paste and let's say this is for the month of May right so we have now an additional file here so we don't need to rerun that entire process let's go to the excel okay and let's go to the data tab and let's click on refresh all and let's see what happens so now as you can see here now we have 5.2 million of rows before we have 4.1 right and that will be added into the power query appending process and also that will automatically go all right so now you can successfully see that uh, we have now 5.2 million of records as we added the may file into the folder as well so technically if you later on delete any file from the data source folder or if you add something raw data you don't need to run that uh, you just need to refresh and that's it the records will get updated in data model and as well as power query so i hope you got an idea how to deal with very large data sets into the excel the practice is being now changing uh, the users of excel needs to learn model excel, excel to make yourself more groom at the workplace in order to work with the bigger data sets so you need to learn power query and power pivot